here because this really is a collaboration between uh, the federal uh, level and the county level and the, and the folks here locally in Middletown. Uh, I want to thank all my partners in government up here, Senator Bonasek, who's been uh, such a leader for so many years um, on so many issues, but particularly on recovering from these storms. I know we've got uh, folks from the city here as well. I'll let the mayor acknowledge everyone um, on his team. I want to thank Rich Mayfield for his help. My own team, Ed Brancati, Joe Donat, who are here. Here's the bottom line. The bottom line is, is today uh, we are commemorating the three-year anniversary of uh, Hurricane Irene. Uh, shortly we'll be commemorating the two-year anniversary of Superstorm Sandy. Uh, these two storms, together with Tropical Storm Lee, did tremendous damage uh, to our part of the world. Orange County was uh, particularly hard hit uh, during Hurricane Irene. So it's fitting that we are here today announcing uh, $11.5 million in new in additional federal assistance, disaster assistance, um, to Orange County, and, and that includes uh, specific assistance for communities that need it most, like Middletown. Now, this is a first-of-its-kind collaboration between the county and the feds. My office, uh, working with the county, has been able to secure this money uh, and to direct it to, uh, to these specific communities by blowing through a lot of red tape that previously would have prevented that. In fact, we were at risk of losing this money before my office got involved working with, uh, with, with the county executive and, and the folks um, locally to make it happen. This $11.5 million brings to $169 million in federal disaster relief that we have secured for the Hudson Valley. $137 million of that money is directed right here to Orange County. That means communities like Washingtonville and Wallkill and Blooming Grove and right here in Middletown, uh, we are going to see uh, damage repaired, we are going to see mitigations undertaken, we're going to see individuals who are helped. Um, there are people right now who are still farming, who are still in their homes because my office working with the county and the local authorities got in the game on this. The $169 million which we have secured to date is part of $338 million in projects that we have identified working with the, county, uh, the counties and the cities and the local communities and our partners at the state level relating to the damage done by Lee, uh, Sandy, and Irene. One of the first things I did when I got to Congress was I got to work on the Sandy Disaster Relief Bill. We passed that bill and, and very importantly we made sure it included money that could be used for the damage done by Hurricane Irene and Tropical Storm Lee. That's critically important for Orange County because here in Orange County we had more damage from Hurricane Irene than the Superstorm uh, that got more attention, Superstorm Sandy. Working together, we've seen progress recently. It's taken too long, but we're making real progress. And it's, we've, we've made this progress because we're working together, because there's not a Democratic or Republican way to get people help after a disaster. We've put all the politics aside, and that's why you're seeing results. I was with, I was with Steve just a few days ago at the Forge Hill Road Bridge, uh, which is finally getting constructed because of his efforts and my efforts to blow through the red tape and get it done. That together with reconstructing Butter uh, and a drive there, uh, getting Bob Cotman full uh, value for his house, and lots of other individuals who have come to us and said, we've been waiting too long. In the, in the Black Dirt region, Pine Hill and elsewhere, farmers like Chris Pavelski have been made whole from the damage he, he uh, incurred during uh, Hurricane Irene after waiting far too long. Uh, young farmers like Jeff and Adina Bialis, who stood in their fields and watched the water come up over their crops in their first year of farming will finally be able to get the help they need. And I'm glad to say we also passed a farm bill, which includes terrific uh, reforms to the crop insurance program that I wrote that will ensure folks in our region get coverage for future damage. So our first job is to help people after a storm. It's not to engage in politics, it's not to talk about budget cuts or offsets, it is to get people help. And I'm just delighted that I've got partners like uh, Mayor DiStefano, County Executive Newhouse, Senator Bonasek, and others uh, who working across party lines have put people first. And so the $11.5 million, I'll let Steve tell you a little bit more about it, uh, will go directly to the hardest hit communities and communities who need it most. And I'm very proud to, uh, I'm very proud to see this progress and we're gonna keep at it because we still have several hundred million dollars of unmet needs in, across the Hudson Valley. As I said, we're chasing $338 million of identified needs. Uh, that's 123 specific requests in 48 communities. And it has been my top priority since the minute I came to Congress uh, to make sure that we get made whole for the damage we received and that we prepare for the damage that will come in the future. And if we're smart, we will fix the roof while the sun is shining 
and we will we will we will do the mitigation necessary to guarantee that when the next storm comes we're ready and that's what today is part of as well so thank you all for being here and i want to turn it over to the county executive and to to the mayor to say a word thank you congressman okay thank you very much congressman. you know the, the congressman really nailed it on the head it comes down to really one phrase getting it done people talk and talk and talk about wanting to do things wanting to correct things wanting to do stuff we're actually getting it done the Fort hill bridge huge project last week been waiting people waiting years uh, and it's really about getting it done. And why is it unique that we're here today? We're unique today because this $11.5 million across America, communities aren't entitled to get this. It really takes what the Congressman's saying, working together on every level of government, whether it's on the federal level with Sean Patrick uh, as our crusader there, or John Bonasek up in the Senate, who's been a longtime supporter, Joe here in the city, and Jeff Berkeley, my friend in the back, and the rest of the council members, with Jeff in the county legislature, getting it done. The CDBG process is not very easy. It really is one thing, it forces collaboration. And if you don't have all those parts working together, you would not get it. And that's literally what we're standing here today. We didn't have to get this $11.5 million. And if one of these partners did not work together, we wouldn't be talking about it right now. So it is very unique that we're talking about it and getting it done and we're gonna be using it for fixing some of the uh, damage that was done. And one of the unique things about what we're doing here, what we're talking about, in the past, you used to have to repair things as it was. That's not good enough because obviously it failed for some reason or another. It needs to be built, reinforced, and stronger than it was before. The new type of guidelines, which a congressman has fought for, which John Bonasek has fought for, have allowed us now to make things better. The bridge he talked about earlier, Fort Hill, is being built with an extra uh, it, used to, it was built with three strands, now it's, I mean, two strands, now it's going to be built with three strands. The work that we're going to be talking about with the mayor is going to be built better than it was before so it can handle a bigger storm. So I couldn't be prouder to stand here with these men and women behind me. And this year marks 40 years since uh, President Jerry Ford signed the community <laughs> development uh, law into law. And that law was meant to, to foster collaboration. And you wouldn't be seen, standing here today, i got to emphasize that, unless all these parts are working. So I couldn't be happy to be here with you, Congressman. You my friend Joe from Middletown to get things done. And my good friend John Bonsack, thank you. Thank you. And of thank course, you uh, Jeff Berkman, my partner in Orange County Government. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. And, um, you know, when we read in the newspaper how uh, Congressman Maloney is bringing money into Orange County in the press conference the other day, we're behind the scenes rooting for him because we know he's fighting just as hard for the other communities in Orange County as he is for us. And the reason why this site was selected in the Middletown press conference was because of the impact, and primarily because two of the projects that we will be submitting are impacted in this area. This beautiful park here um, was underwater for both storms, and now it's becoming un going underwater even on smaller storms. So we're submitting two projects, one dealing with Monhagen Brook, the other dealing with a detention pond and some uh, water uh, detention here in this park that has been expanded with county cooperation. Uh, Jeff Berkman um, was helpful years ago to expand this park. But at certain times of the year, the park has been deemed useless because of the damage and the water impact. This goes out through the whole city. Um, and while we've submitted a lot of projects and, and under the FEMA, and we've received quite a bit of money, this additional money will help us address things that were not covered on the original FEMA program. So um, I want to thank Congressman Maloney, and County Executive Senator Bonasek, Assemblywoman Gunther, who's not here today, to make sure people know that this is a, a, a continuing battle, that we need representation in Washington to get our share of the pie, and, and I think the Congressman hit the nail right on the head with this argument that we've had in the past about offsets. This is a critical time for Middletown, while the sun is out, to correct the problems that we are now seeing more frequent. The 100-year storms are now every two years, uh, every, every year in some cases. Smaller storms, because of development outside the city, are having tremendous impact on the city where neighborhoods are going under underwater. Uh, we've made the commitment ourselves. We um, a little bit downstream from here, uh, we invested 3.9 million dollars on the Sterling Street sewer area, in cooperation with the state government and Senator Bonasek at the time, and and we continue to make our local investment, which is necessary. But during a time of disaster, that's the time then you you look back and see what can be corrected, what we're entitled to. We see disasters all over the country that FEMA gets involved in. And, and it's the job of our representatives to fight for that money. And, and I can't say enough about Congressman Maloney's efforts, and not only you, but your staff, 
and the communication that we've had and, and just the effort that's been put into this matter in cooperation with us on the local level. So I wanted to thank him and uh, let people know in this area especially that help is on the way. So thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Um, first of all, <clears throat> uh, I want to talk a little bit, something a little different but related. Uh, we're always grateful for our federal representatives fighting in Washington to try to get a bigger piece of the pie uh, to help people. And certainly our congressman has done that, uh, and uh, we tip our hats for him for getting us this extra money. But I see weather patterns changing as we go forward. And what I see, at least in the four counties that I represent, where you have what I call mini burst, and they hit smaller areas areas that don't qualify for the threshold of federal aid of 26 million. So we implement programs for low interest loans to municipalities and citizens that quite frankly can't afford it. So it's a challenge for all of us at the state level, the federal level, but I think as we go forward in the future, we have to try to lower those thresholds, both at the state level and the federal level. So municipalities, injured businesses, and citizens that get devastated by these changing patterns that affect smaller regions, that they can get help, help which they can't do themselves. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Senator. You know, so I just want to say that, that sometimes, uh, and as usual, the, the senator is, is spot on, and I've actually, we were actually just discussing a minute ago the way we might be able to change the federal rules on that to help smaller communities, and I'd, I'm delighted to learn more about that and to work on that. I, I also think it's, it's worth emphasizing that, that today's announcement also guarantees that half of the $11.5 million will be directed at communities that need it most, um, and, and that's really important uh, because we've got to go forward together. Uh, one thing that, that I believe very firmly is that Orange County has to go forward together. We all have to do this, and that means the small towns and villages, and that means uh, our small cities. That means places like Port Jervis that just saw some very serious flooding this week have to be as important as cities like Newburgh, and, and, and small communities have to get the attention uh, that the larger ones sometimes enjoy. And I think that's why it's so important that we all work together. There's, I just want to acknowledge there's a, do you mind if I single you out, ma'am? There's a woman who lives here on the edge of the park who is uh, speaking to me. Do you want to say something about what today's announcement means to you? Or I don't want to put you on the spot. Come on up, come on up. Come on up here. <laughs> better over the hill than under the hill. Come on up. And better, better, better over the hill than underwater in this case. Yeah. And this is your house right here, ma'am. Is that right? Why don't you identify yourself and just tell them what today's announcement means okay, for you? Okay, my, my name is my name is Janat Odom, and I've lived in that house on the corner, I guess, 21 years. And it was absolutely devastating to have to experience the flooding from Irene and Lee, as was mentioned. Um, it was good to hear that the smaller people that are unable to, to defend themselves, unable to have financial recourse, are actually being considered at this time. And for that, I'm very grateful to have heard that in words of one syllable here today. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.